All right, so this is going to be an interesting video. This is the open root aluminum butt weld. This is GRB College of Welding, and if you look at the bottom, there's a little devil head pointing at the aluminum TIG course. So if the welding in the video is something that interests you and you want to be able to weld aluminum pipe, this is where I go, this is where you can go too. I actually spend quite a lot of time here. It's actually the best place I... I really enjoy going here all the time. This is the fit up I'm going to be using in the video. And this is a, a, a fit up I used later in the video, just an excerpt from the old video. This is what the root pass is going to look like with the open root. This is a weld I did at GRB there for another practice, practicing, always practicing, testing, training, etc. Advantage 400, this is a machine that's going to be uh, running my Miller Dynasty 350. And this is my Miller Dynasty 350 with all the stickers on. This is the machine that does all the welding in the video here. Now if you notice, there's a couple things wrong already. Masking tape contaminates the aluminum. The foam pig contaminates the aluminum, especially the material the foam pig is made out of. Uh, if it starts getting hot, it starts smoking. The smoke contaminates the aluminum because of the stuff the foam pig is made out of. Uh, you know, I'm going to play with my helmet here in a second here. Uh, that contaminates my, my gloves, which contaminates my, my filler metal, which the filler metal is being fed into the pipe. So there's a couple things wrong already right out the, right out the hop here. But uh, I do not have uh, aluminum tape here at the moment. I just kind of sort of ran out. Also, I'm not using uh, uh, brand new brushes. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the things I'm using uh, are kind of used. So it, uh, I don't want to use my, my brand new, brand new, uh, you know, like stainless hand brush and, and other stuff. Because this is just for practice. All this video is is just for, just for practice, really. So I'm going up the left-hand side here. This is, uh, basically, the way the video is going to do is it's going to be a, a, it's going to show the weld. Uh, well, me doing the weld, and it's going to show what the root pass looks like, and then me welding, show the root pass. Me welding, show the root pass. It's going to be a variation of that, and basically towards the end of the video, it's just going to show, uh, you know, an excerpt from an, uh, from another video where it's showing the extended land fit up. It just sped up. It's a sped up version, and then it shows the the root pass. And the reason why I do that is just show what the root pass, uh, the difference between the the appearance of the root pass between the extended land fit up and the open butt, uh, open root butt weld aluminum as for what I'm doing in the video here. Now when I shut the arc off, basically what I'm doing is I'm, I am, yes, protecting the aluminum, but I am also protecting the tungsten. Some guys, it's funny, you, you see some guys, they weld, they, they just remove the TIG torch right away and then just swing around the atmosphere and then just lay down on something and it contaminates their, their, their tungsten very badly. So this is one showing the root pass so far. So I'm just showing the root pass. Uh, this is one quarter of the root pass done so far. The bottom left hand side done with left hand. Another thing with, uh, with the uh, tungsten, you know, uh, when you're welding the aluminum, the, the tungsten is held at higher temperatures for longer duration. And, uh, you know, you need to protect the tungsten, keep it away from the atmosphere and allow it to cool down. Uh, usually, you'll see it, it'll be kind of glowing and they'll turn like a silver color. And then when it turns silver, count another 8 seconds, keep the shielding gas, uh, the argon on that, uh, that tungsten for another 8 seconds. And they can shut the gas off. And, and after you shut the gas off, the tungsten will be a nice silver. However, if you just like stop the weld and you just like remove the t uh, remove the tick torch and maybe swing around the atmosphere and lay it on something, whatever, uh, your tungsten is going to be uh, blue and purple. And basically, the uh, you know you could come by with little tweezers and just snap the the tungsten off because it's very brittle, you know. And, and if it's very brittle, then then you can imagine when you start welding, it's going to be very brittle. It's going to start spitting. So basically if your tungsten is very, very uh, properly shielded away from the atmosphere, allowed to cool down and it remains silver, then it's very, very strong, very hard to break. So I'm doing the left hand side here, just the top left hand side, so this is uh, uh, coming up to the half the root pass here. In a second here I'm going to be protecting the tungsten. Just protecting the tungsten, uh, keeping it protected so it's not brittle. Very easy to break, keep it strong. Now these three images of the, of the weld are all the very same spot of the weld. 
There appears to be defects in the top picture. In the video showing the road, it appears as if there are tiny gas pockets, appearance of porosity and defects. No good. However, looking over stock footage of the shot of the weld, in one showing I shone the flashlight, the second picture and the third picture, right at the weld and noticed tiny specks of aluminum covering the weld. Now what I assumed was tiny gas pockets is actually little specks of aluminum. Those little tiny little gas pockets that appears, that are, you know, at the bottom and, and a little bit at the top there, those are actually little specks of aluminum. Go back to the picture and take a look at the picture. What this means is that when I remove the bridge tacks, I need to ensure that any metal from the tacks themselves do not get inside the pipe. They go inside the pipe, they hit the argon, and then they circulate around the pipe and stick to the warm aluminum, my root pass. And in interestingly, when I took the course uh, for titanium at uh, GRB College of Welding a couple years ago, I was told this very same thing with the titanium when you remove, uh, when, you're, when you're removing the bridge tacks, you got to be very careful, a little specks of titanium getting into the pipe, little specks will cause little issues. It's the size of the, of the little specks, they're very, very quick to heat up, they'll oxidize, and they'll cause little issues. Now we're going up the right hand side here. You see, this is the reason why I always go to GRB, uh, is because of the very intricate little details. You know, the, uh, basically it's like, if you want to be like obsessive and, and be like a scientist about the welding and be very, very precise, then that's why I go to GRB all the time, is because I, I get these little intricate little details, these little, little things that, that make a really immense big difference. Going up the right hand side here. And you're going to take a look at the tungsten. You see how red it is? It's coming down in temperature. Now if I take the tungsten and I remove it immediately and maybe lay it over something, it's going to just oxidize the tungsten very badly. I'm protecting the tungsten. It's silver right now. I wait for another couple of eight seconds or so. I can turn the gas off. It's going to be nice and silver. It's going to be very strong. So this is the rule pass so far on the right hand side. This is three quarters of the rule pass done. And this is the bottom. Now you see how I'm flashing the flashlight on here. You see that the coloration, how bright the oxide, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the cleanliness is there. I can't remember what it's called now, but uh, you see how it's, uh, take a look at the start there. Left hand side, right hand side, the start at the bottom. See how it's bright, very shiny. This right here is not this root pass in the video. Th I'm showing this root pass right here. This is a root pass I did on another, a separate practice coupon. But I'm just showing, you know, that, that, you know, sometimes I can get the root pass looking really nice. Sometimes it looks okay. But I'm just showing that, I'm just throwing that in there just to show that, you know, I, I can, I can get it looking very nice. But uh, the thing with aluminum is there's a lot of variables. A lot of variables, especially the machine I'm using, Miller Dynasty 350. I can have four different waveforms. I can have, I can adjust the frequency to all different I could adjust the, 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 you know, the balance, the cleaning action, uh, the penetration, uh, also the, the, uh, the tungsten themselves, the choice of tungsten I use, how I prep the end. All these things have a very distinct adjustment and change on the aluminum, including my welding technique. Now, with this aluminum, I'm using different, different welding techniques. When I did this particular pipe, I was at GRB College of Welding and I had Jerry give me a demo. And I always learn the best when I watch Jerry because it, it's like having, he's been welding for 50 plus years and it's like having all this knowledge all this know-how, seeing welders weld, training welders throughout the years, having all this knowledge and practice, just coming together 
in like like as like fruition or whatever. It's just coming together in that very split second minute, just just showing me a demo. So you you, you kind of see all that accumulation of everything, practice, knowledge, and everything out throughout the years, just coming together in a little demo, the which I get to watch, which is kind of cool. And so that's the reason why I'm using his technique here, because I like his technique a lot better. It's very, very precise, very controlled, very fluid movements. And the Rupas, when I took his technique, it's very, the Rupas came out a billion times better. Really nice technique. So like I was saying about the cleaning action in the etching zone, if you look at the weld here, it appears a little bit darker. My etching, the cleaning zone appears a little bit darker. If I shine the flashlight on it a little bit differently, the etching zone will appear, or appear lighter. So the weld changes depending on where I shine the flashlight. But I'm very fortunate that I was able to get this shot of the weld on you know on on camera here but I was shooting it this is we're looking through a little uh, inspection mirror a tiny little mirror and I, and I use this mirror just to get the closest shot I could get of the root pass So basically we're going to go around the root pass again here. And like I was showing you before in the video, if this welding, if this aluminum is something that interests you, you see I go to GRB College of Welding all the time. I'm always there. I've taken the courses throughout the years, but I'm always going back for additional training, practice, testing. So I spend a lot of time there. And this particular metal, uh, aluminum, also titanium, also nickel alloys, and actually all, all the other metals actually, SCT, I got a demo from Jerry. Uh, even stainless stick root, I got a demo from Jerry. 7018 stick root, I got a demo from Jerry. So basically, you know, like, uh, like I, I'm trying to do the weld in this video, I'm trying to do it as, as, as good as I can possibly get it. But it comes with good training. You see, I have very good training. I'm not self-taught. No, I am not self-taught. I have very, very good training. So hopefully somebody that watches this video comes to understand that, you know, this guy has very good training. With this aluminum, the Dynasty 350, there's a lot of a lot of, uh, of variables I can play with. Of course, if I welded this aluminum day in, day out, maybe as an employer or employee or something, uh, you know, I could I could really pull it together. But being a being a rig welder, you know, sometimes I work with one company, they want me to weld stainless stainless pipe. And I work with another company, they want me to weld nickel alloys. Work with another company, they want me to go pipelining. Work with another company, maybe I'm fabbing spools, getting 100 inches, or whatever. So it's always something different. So you know, so if you can kind of imagine how much practice a guy must have doing these welds only part time or, or a little bit at a time. This this what I'm showing here is the extended land fit up take a look at the root pass the, the root pass the appearance of the weld is much different much different than the open root uh, butt weld aluminum much different different appearance also take a look at the cleaning how much cleaning was involved uh, very very shiny well it's kind of a dull color now but uh, very dull aluminum compared to like the aluminum you can kind of see uh, in the heat effects and everything a very very good cleaning just to have a high high chance of welding the aluminum the funny thing with this video when I made this video 
I practiced on a four inch and I made a complete mess of it. It was a mess. And I figured, well, okay, well maybe I'll get this eight inch here and I'll, I'll, I'll get this one on camera. For whatever reason, this was one of my top five best welds I've ever done. This, this extended land fit up. This weld right here is one of my top five best welds I've ever done. I, I, yeah.